How safe is your tap water? I mean, do you trust it enough to drink it? I don't. <laughs> Which is why I have to buy drinking water. And most people in the city of Nairobi do. I mean, there are places in this country and other parts of Africa where you can find safe filtered drinking water, but not here. So today I want to do three things. How safe is tap water? Now, the second thing I want to identify is if I can make this water drinkable. Can I actually make it safe? And how? So that's step number two. How do you like my handwriting, by the way? <laughs> and finally, we need to test our results. So we must test in a lab. But first, let's quickly understand where our water comes from. Nairobi sources most of its water from nearby dams as well as some groundwater reservoirs. The problem is that the city doesn't supply enough water, which means that extra water is supplied through water trucks, boreholes or water cellars. It also means that pipes, which in some cases are old and leaky, are also illegally tapped and damaged. The result is we have no idea how clean the water coming out of our taps actually is. All right, it's time to do some experiments. I've got a jar here, which I want to clean first with some rubbing alcohol, just so that it's completely clean and decontaminated. All right, that looks pretty clean to me. One of these samples will have the tap water and the second sample will boil that water for about a minute or two. And when we take the samples to the lab, I'm very curious to see if there's going to be a noticeable difference. So let's go fill this in. We've got our first sample of just tap water. We've not done anything to it. And our second sample of boiled water is actually still a bit warm, nice. And for our third sample, we took raw river water. So I'm just gonna hold this here. Oh, you can see that. All the floating goodness in there. We'll collect some of this water and filter it and boil it and take it to the lab and see if there's gonna be a significant difference between our first sample, second sample, third sample, and of course we're gonna have a fourth one. Let's get filtering. What types of pollutants might we find in water here in Kenya? Microbial contaminants, bacteria and viruses from human and animal waste, heavy metals, such as lead and mercury, often found in industrial runoff, pesticides and chemicals from agricultural activities that seep into water sources. All of these pollutants have a negative effect on our health, either in the short term or long term. That's why we don't want them in our water. I've put together everything we need for our DIY filter. You're gonna need a container to collect your filtered water. This funnel, a cloth that's going to come right here, a rubber band, some sand, charcoal, and gravel. So, you take your piece of cloth and you attach it to the bottom here. Then we start layering the filter. Now we're mimicking what already exists in nature. So we start with sand, charcoal, then we're gonna need some more sand, more charcoal. Now it looks something a little bit like this. And then we take a little bit of the gravel and finally we've got our raw river water. The whole point is to see if this can look a little better after it's gone through our filters. Wow, oh, that stinks. The filtered and boiled river water, they're now ready to be taken to the lab and see what the scientists say. Hi, Danish. Hi. Thanks for, oh wait, I forgot something. Oh. Much better. We're going to be getting to these questions in a little while. We did send you a couple of samples about a week ago. I'm guessing you have the results. We do. Let's go to the tap water. Is there anything from our tap water sample that we should be concerned about? Of course, yes, we should be concerned. Of course, yes. According to the results, the recommended pH is be should be between 6.5 to 8.5. But as you can see here, the pH is 8.82. That really makes it unfit for consumption. What happened then after we boiled our water? Could we have fixed that? Fortunately, I can see, yes, the results show that uh, after boiling, the pH level reduced to allowable limits. 8.43. 8.43. Wow, so just on the edge. Just but, on the edge. But that's really good news that just a simple thing as boiling your water can already eliminate something like you know alkalinity in your water then we have the raw river water there are a number of parameters and very serious ones to say that have indicated this water was not fit for consumption we realized that uh, there were several several microbes in this water both with 
pathogenic and unpathogenic and the number was huge. We went ahead and checked an, a parameter called E. coli. If you find your E. coli in water, it indicates fecal contamination. Yeah. Fecal mm. contamination could be from sewer, from mammals, from people, from birds. When they grow, they, there is a substrate that is broken down and therefore that substrate makes the E. coli bacteria to appear greenish Green. blue because it has got a unique enzyme. Sorry, I can't get over how awful it looks. It just looks like di a disease. And we went ahead and checked Staphylococcus aureus. What is Staphylococcus aureus? It's yes. like, it sounds very good in the mouth. <laughs> to it's, say, it sounds. To say it. it sounds a sweet name. Yeah. Though not very interesting to interact with. Okay. They are always very resistant to even antibiotics. Some some of them. So this Staphylococcus, as we can see, it was present in this water, and for its case, it should not even be present at all, even presence of one indicates the water is not fit for consumption. consumption okay so let's move on to our fourth and final sample i'm very curious about this because i thought that having filtered and boiled it it would look a little better from the look of things it doesn't look great but the results indicate otherwise eh? with the regard to microbial parameters it indicates that everything is okay would you drink it until i check for the chemical parameters okay this uh, river water indicates that uh, there are high levels of manganese and fluoride, mm -hmm. so therefore, it's not fit for consumption. Mm, I thought fluoride was good in water because of its benefits for our teeth, or am I misinformed? No, uh, the everything to a given level becomes a poison, you know? Right. Yes, so everything above a given threshold becomes unfit. Okay. All right, so what have we learned from our little DIY experiment today? Well, the first thing is that despite looking very clean tap water isn't always safe this one we learned did not have any pathogens but something as simple as a ph can disqualify it from being safe so good to note however we also learned that doing something as simple as boiling the water can bring it up to safety standards what else did we learn that our waters here in nairobi are in a sad state and that they contain all kinds of contaminants from microbes to chemical ones we did also see though that combining our different methods of filtration and boiling can significantly improve the quality of water, making it perhaps not safe for consumption, but for other uses. So tell me, what other experiments do you want us to do for you? We really enjoy doing this. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.